keep my eye on this. Look how fast that's moving. Wow. And there it is coming in. Look at the rain. I gotta go back. I gotta go back. Look at this, eh? Isn't that crazy? Wow. I'm back here. You can smell the, uh, there's the tree down. You can smell the, uh, fresh wood. Canada. When you think of Canada, the only weather that really pops into your mind is snow. Not severe weather. However, Canada does get its fair share of severe weather, whether on 80 tornadoes annually. And it's not just tornadoes. As on May 21st, 2022, a derecho would tear through Ontario and Quebec over a 9-hour, 1,000-kilometer track, killing 11 and spawning several tornadoes in addition to being the 6th costliest storm in Canadian history. In this video, we break down the meteorological setup, the storm, and its aftermath. Before hopping into the event setup, you have to understand that derechos are a common occurrence in southern Ontario. Derechos affecting this region typically develop in the U.S. Midwest and only affect a small portion of southern Ontario or Quebec. Typically, derechos anywhere in this area form during midsummer. These derechos usually occur when a hot, muggy air mass covers the Midwest and Ohio Valley. Since the stronger derechos in this region tend to develop on the northern boundary between the hot, humid air and cooler, drier air, where an elevated mixed layer is present. Most of these derechos that develop and move into Canada are progressive. During the month of May, a heat wave in the U.S. moved north into Ontario and Quebec, bringing July-like humidity and heat. Ten days out from the event, some weather forecasters were beginning to look at the 21st, one of which was me. At the time, I was doing my own forecasts and writing them down, and I still have it written down, and this is when I was learning how to forecast keep in mind. On the 19th, 20th, and 21st of May, the heat was more than present with Toronto Pearson Airport hitting 29 degrees Celsius, which is 3 degrees shy of the record for that date, with a humid X of 36 degrees Celsius. The system first developed south of Chicago. On Saturday morning at 10.37 a.m. EST, thunderstorms with significant wind developed in Macomb and St. Clair counties, but this cluster of thunderstorms had not yet formed a bow echo. The derecho developed near Sarnia, Ontario at 9.30 a.m. and was off to the races, speeding towards Toronto in the highly populated southern Ontario region at over 100 kilometers an hour. The historic storm is now underway. 45 minutes after developing, the storm matured and at 10.45 a.m. around London, Ontario, the derecho had co-located into a bow front roughly 100 kilometers wide and had developed wind speeds close to 100 kilometers an hour. The storm dropped two Kilo CS tornadoes, both being F1 in London. The bow front continued to widen and intensify east of London. As the storm grew, it impacted Kitchener, Ontario around 12 p.m., with 132 km an hour wind gusts being recorded. For reference, this is the strength of an EF1 tornado. Shortly after, the storm began to affect Hamilton, Mississauga, and Toronto at 1 p.m., with 130 plus km an hour winds. After moving east-northeast, the storm affected Uxbridge, Ontario, spawning an EF2 tornado at 1.15 p.m., and many small towns over the next two and a half hours would be affected as the storm tracked towards Ottawa, spawning several tornadoes along the way. At 3.50 p.m., the derecho tore through Ottawa, being a scary sight to behold as it blacked out the sky and unleashed winds well over 100 kilometers an hour, downing trees, power poles, street lights, and causing roof damage. At 5.30, the storm hit Montreal. To the east, in the town of Mugog, 143 km an hour winds were recorded, the highest recorded winds the storm would produce. As the storm petered out, it would affect Quebec City before dissipating in south central Quebec after 9 hours and 1,000 kilometers. The derecho impacted roughly 15.6 million people, representing about 41% of Canada's population. Strong winds downed over 1,900 power poles, five metal transmission towers, and numerous trees along the path of the derecho. The damage included the downing of over 300 power poles in Ottawa alone. In Quebec, the lower tides, Laura Deer, 
and Louis Tass were most affected. Ten people were killed in eastern Ontario by wind-thrown trees or branches. Another person was killed after their boat sank in the Ottawa River near Gatineau, Quebec. Most of the victims were engaged in recreational activities on the holiday weekend. Extensive damage was inflicted upon homes and buildings by wind and falling trees, with some homes destroyed in Rockland. A 30-ton silo was moved a foot and had its roof torn off. Power outages affected over 1.1 million people, with 586,000 Hydro-1 outages in Ontario and 550,000 Hydro-Quebec outages. In Ottawa, the airport and water treatment plant lost grid power for more than 24 hours. In a letter to Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson, Hydro Ottawa described the damage dealt to its power distribution system as beyond comprehension and more severe than the 2018 tornadoes or the 1998 ice storm. The municipal governments of Uxbridge and Clarence Rockland declared local states of emergency on May 21st. Peterborough declared a state of emergency on May 25th, and Ottawa did not end up declaring a state of emergency. Mayor Watson stated that the city had enough resources to handle the situation. Many people in the hardest hit areas were left without power for days and some for over a week. Most of these areas were in Quebec, however widespread damages did occur in southern Ontario. In my area, a full-size transformer, as I like to call them, was shoved over and crumpled up. Tree branches littered the roads and shallow and small trees were shoved over, in addition to a few missing roof shingles on a few houses. In my area, winds were over 95 kilometers an hour as the storm rolled in. In total, $875 million in damages were dealt, making it the sixth costliest natural disaster in Canadian history. Estimated wind gusts to reach speeds of 190 kilometers an hour, that of an EF2. 11 people would lose their lives. To conclude, this event is personal to me. As I forecasted it over a week out and kept an eye on it all the way until it impacted my area. This event gave me personally a scary beauty with its ominous storm structured winds accompanied by its beautiful lightning that was displayed to me. But the storm impacted a lot more than me. And many people in southern Ontario and Quebec remember and will remember this event for some time. Big thanks for making it to the end of the video, and I get this one is a little bit shorter but I wanted to make this video due to my experience with it. Also, just wanted to say big thanks for all the support. As I type, we are at 700 subscribers, which is just insane, so thanks. And I also have a Discord server, that is the pinned comment. And, um, yep, thank you, and goodbye.